Welcome to another piking adventure. This place is really, really special to us because in many ways, this is the place where it all started. This is where I caught my personal best fish. It's not a 20, it's only 15 and a half, but that's where everything started. And that's where we made a mission to actually catch a 20. Uh, Mike loves this place too, and he even fishes it when it's completely frozen over. Look at this, it's like You'll so probably many see it in the background. An army of about 80 or 70 or 80 <laughs> swans. Like, this is literally where it all started for me. Um, I'd fished various types of fishing over the years, but had never really predator angled, not for a pike anyway. And Sam caught that fish that he was mentioning was his PB. It was an absolute stonker, but it was the very first pike that I'd ever seen caught. Hundreds of pike we've seen caught now. The very first fish that I ever saw, the very first pike rather that I ever saw, was the largest. It was kind of weird. It still makes me think like the universe was just giving me this amazing massive fish to get me hooked into the predator angle. Because ever since then, I've never bloody seen one anywhere near the size. The start oh, of an odyssey of pike fishing that yeah. has lasted for more than ten years yeah. now for you. Still it's going been, strong. Yeah, but it's it's been like a combined amount of more than two decades, and we haven't caught a twenty yet. So we've decided yeah. to up our game, and today we are in a boat. Normally Mike and I fish from the bank, but this time we got offered the opportunity of a boat and we decided to take it. It gives you access to the areas that you won't have fished before and that other people won't have fished before. Just gives you more freedom, more uh, mobility, as well. you more feel, confidence. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's an adventure, so it's great fun too. Uh, but when you're out on a boat, it's really important to wear a life jacket. Yeah. Both Mike and I are wearing life jackets. Even if you're a strong swimmer, even if it's summertime and it's 22 degrees, it is not summertime and it is not 22 degrees, as evidenced by my limb sip and horrendous head cold. Um, but yeah, wear a life jacket. This one's just made of really buoyant material. And uh, this one is automatic. The way it works is when you fall in the water, there's a little paper membrane that dissolves and a compressed spring-loaded puncture rod goes through a seal on this CO2 canister. That inflates the whole thing and uh, there's a little whistle here as well if you're the attention-seeking type. <whistles> Pierce your eardrums. So anyway, the CO2 canister inflates the whole thing and it even inflates at the back so if you fall in the water face down it'll actually flip you around so that your airways are clear. So always wear a life jacket if you're going out in a boat. Um, it's just a small boat and it has a little electric engine on the back which is hooked up to a car battery uh, in a battery box. Uh, it's kind of making me think I want a boat. So. Yeah, or a troll motor. It's got a little trolling motor on it, you just crank it. Uh, there's like five gears and then there's a reverse. So we've just been wheeling it around, sort of traversing the lake and uh, trying to find out any new sort of deep spots or maybe channels or bays that we've missed or anything that we uh, couldn't really fish before from the access that we had, the limited access that we previously had from the bank itself. Before we came out, I took a look on Google Maps at the lake and it doesn't look like this on Google Maps. I just put it into Photoshop and I marked in dark blue the places that I thought were the deepest because the bits that are in the lighter greeny color, there's evidence of weeds sticking through. So you can kind of see that it's going to be a shallower area. And of course, uh, the deeper areas is probably where the pike will be holed up in winter and all the bait fish will be there in, in tight packs. So hopefully if you find one, you'll find more than one and there's every opportunity of a yeah. double hookup, which would be great fun. Oh, yeah. Are we... Oh, other way around. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so... We came from around here, and we're up here, and that's this shallow bay that we're in right now, up tight against that island. So I think where we want to be is right here, because oh, that's the deeper yeah. water, and that's... down oh, around that direction there anywhere in that big direction. Now we can either sit along this structure and fish out, or we can go down there and fish into it. I reckon we should go down there where the sun is rising and fish into it. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think that's a pretty sensible, formidable plan. I concur with that. Let's get on it. Do you concur? After? I concur wholeheartedly, <laughs> sir, yes. <laughs>
See, that had to be a big pike flying under them, under the water, just fucking getting them going, getting them fucking. <laughs> Tell you what, whenever you're as hard as we are, you go pike fishing even when they feel like sh**. Get that in there. All over the seat box. <laughs> Magic. An improper brew. I think it's probably time we told you what we're doing. So we've got a float fished bluey over here. What have you got out over here? Um, I'm fishing with a submerged tool macro on a slider float. Um, which is on the bottom, and then I've got another one which is on the bottom, which is a whole lot of back in the head <coughs> for a bit of smelly usage. First fish I've heard all day, just uh, 12 o'clock, about 25 yards out. Just saw the dorsal and tail of a little pike, um, and then it went under the water, but I just cast out to the left and behind, so. Quickly retrieved then, I'm gonna fire this out for the second time, see if it's still in the area. It was just right there. This is a dead bait? No, this is nope. a jointed this is a jointed lure that I've got on. What lure is it? Um it's a savage gear four play lip tearing lure it's called. I'm not sure what the colour pattern is, but it's a really gold reflective I think it's such a pike pattern in a trout body shape. I'll shoot in a moment here. But if you can see, well, I'm not sure if you can see as it comes in, but <clears throat> it does have a, because there's several joints in the body. It does have a nice swimming action. Yeah, that's cool. And there's two different uh, points. You can hook it underneath the lip or you can hook it on the head and it gives it a slightly different depth to swim at and a slightly different action as well. See, it's, it's not like, See the way I can go straight and not much. If you go slow, sometimes it does nothing. Like there, and then other times it swims a bit differently. But Flip it out there, stalk that pike, big man. Let's do it. Love it. This is so tense. First wave, our enthusiasm was great, and then it sort of waned a little bit. Second wave, we've moved around, trying to find some deeper water, but we're sort of unable to locate it. It seems pretty shallow out here. And kind of featureless too, so we've got um, uh, lots of reed here, which is kind of disappointing or frustrating rather if you're lure fishing, because I'm picking the reed off my hooks every time. So we're gonna float fish something, and that way we won't have to uh, keep cleaning our, our hooks up so we'll get back in the water here and hopefully hopefully when we come back the big one will be on the line okay there we go managed to get the first fish excellent it's not a big one but it's very welcome we've been out for a few hours now and nothing's happened yeah it's more like five and a bit so uh, it's very welcome this is just the buzz we need to get things started. Yeah, and hopefully, again, it's the uh, fish turning onto the feed as well. Yeah. Lovely it's fish. It's not too bad, mate. That's no, a nice it's, fish. It's a nice fish. Nicely yeah. hooked as well. Don't think that's too bad. I'm going to see if I can chin it in, but there's a flying treble there, so I've got to be really careful of that. Yeah. But just be careful in case she runs again. So we that. Got the anti reverse off. Oh look, there's no fight out of them in, in these, these months, like. Uh, she could take off again. Yeah, Need but I mean... careful. Like I say, there's a flying treble there as well. See, there's 
That's her. Turning into an episode, Sam. This is a piking adventure. For the next fish cup, then. This is a piking adventure. Double hookups. Yes, double hookups. That's what it's all about. Awesome. <laughs> Look at my scrapper scrapper. <laughs> Look at yours, Kirkwood. Oh, I love it. I love it. Let's hold them up nice and close. Sweet. Get your mug in there, mate. <laughs> Fantastic. Give a kiss. Beautiful creature. Get it, get it up to the lens there, mate. Look at this. That makes a piking adventure worthwhile. <laughs> okay, let's get them back in the net. We'll rest them for a bit and we'll do a double release. Evening sunshine here, yeah. and a double release. Look. Creatures. That's unbelievable. One is a bit gnarly looking. Oh yeah, that's my favourite. And the other is pristine. Character. Oh no, the other one has a big scar too. Right. Double release. There's one away. That's the gnarly one. Excuse the shaky camera work. The adrenaline is pumping. Get a out here. Here you go, girl. Come on. That's nice work, Kirky. Love it, love it, love it. Well done. That's a pike for each of us, bro. Sweet. Nice. This is class. This is just great fun. Oh, it turned into a bit. It was a bit problematic there. We were but, both uh, losing faith. We were both losing faith. And the answer was to double down and get the enthusiasm levels back up. I'm gonna stop this and clean up now. It seems like they have a collective consciousness or something like that, you know, like their their minds are all one because very often when you catch one, you'll catch a few, or when you don't catch any, you know. None of them bite whatsoever. But it's like it's that like... time you had that crazy lure fishing session off the jetty, and yeah. oh my, it was eight fish in two hours or something like that. It was just non stop action. Yeah. It was like someone flicked a switch and they all went crazy and they couldn't get enough. Yeah, we did We did say that perhaps it was the light levels changing, but I just think it was more than that. It seems like they're, it seems like they're collectively, you know, um, linked in in some way and that whenever one does something they all tend to do it you know i have some of my own thoughts on this could be that if one decides to go on the feed the competitive instincts in the others are all switched on because they don't want that one to eat all the available food and be left with nothing themselves so it could have a kind of domino effect where once one goes voraciously on the feed the others start going on the feed a to take advantage of the panic in the shoal fish but also to, to try and make sure that one pike doesn't snap up all the food and that they all get a fair crack at it um, as with everything in fishing, you can have theories and then you can be confronted with a reality that kind of contradicts it. Uh, but it's really fun to muse these sort of things. And if you do find something that works for you again and again, and if you have a theory that, that does sort of uh, ring true and it works for you, stick to it and, and press home that advantage. It's always good to catch more fish and it's always good to have your own theories on how to catch fish. Keep a little fishing diary. You know what you caught, how you caught it, where you caught it, when you caught it, and you'll be able to notice trends and you know possible things that might help your angling in the future because you'll be able to see things that again that link in that you might have thought had no link at all, even just things like weather conditions. You know, if you can build up a picture of how the fish predate and how they move around given in different conditions and temperatures, then you build up a better, a bigger picture of, of how to how to locate them and how to successfully get them on the bank and then put them back safely, of course. I'd rather catch a 20 pounder in here or from a river than from a trout reservoir because I think it's harder. I honestly, I don't think I'd mind. I honestly wouldn't get a f***ing movie like that. But I got it from an Irish window in the Vanny. Um, 
about me either way. It's not as if they're feeding the fish steroids. The fish go to that size whenever there's trout there. Yeah, see, in a way, I'd rather catch a 20 from a trout water because I know it's going to be younger, more muscular than a, a 20 from here. Generally, it'll be a bit older. I bit older. <laughs> 20 from there. It's just like, the three years old one. That is such a strange way to look at it, though. I, I kind of understand. I kind of understand. You'd like, rather catch a 20 from a trout water because it'll be younger than some old haggard. It'll be a healthier, it'll be a geriatric pike from like gradually <laughs> put on weight like half a pound a year. Well, I was told we were going to be fishing in a deep hole, so I've got some lures that I usually wouldn't fish with. I usually fish in about sort of five to ten feet of water, and I brought lures here that I was thinking would get down about fifteen feet of water, fifteen feet down. So I got some heavy sinkers. Um, I've come here and it's actually a little weedier than what I thought, so they're not the most ideal, but just a variety of shapes and sizes. I've picked some naturalistic colours and some outlandish, more gregarious colours, just so that if the water or the light levels change, I've got something to vary it up with. Um, a lot of these are sort of a tro small trout shape. They're made by um, Savage Gear Lures. Um, just a few different colours. I think this one's called the Golden Ambulance, but it's sort of perch striped with a bit of glitter in it. Um, a rainbow trout variant there. But these are quite small, they're slow sinking. I think they're a medium sink actually. And they've got a nice little crank action to them. But uh, my, my, my handy demon medium sink, this is actually, it's, it's labeled a medium sink, but it sinks quite fast. And again, it's got a lovely action which displaces a lot of water. These are similar lures to the other ones and they a much larger size. They cast a little bit further out. And there's some big fish in here, so I just thought, you know, bigger hooks, bigger lures, slightly more chance of catching a bigger fish. I'm not sure if that rule to, proves to be true or not, but I've also got a couple of shallower running ones. These are a couple of jerk baits here. Uh, Savage Gear jerk bait. And I think that's a CVC or Strike Pro, a Buster jerk lure. These generally work a bit better when the water's a little warmer and when the pike are a little more active. I have struggled with these lures in the past, but I just thought I'd bring a couple today just to mix it up if I wasn't having any luck, which is how it's proved to be. Um, this, this lure here is often quite effective. It's pretty. It's a pretty un unrealistic and unnatural looking shape and colour really. It's called the Jointed Dolphin. Uh, it's a fox lure, it's a medium sinker, but uh, there's a great a great story with this lure. So we were fishing over there off the jetty. Um, uh, several of us, I think we had about 14 or 15 rods out, all dead baits. Um, and as soon as I put this lure on, and it was fished in between all the dead baits that had been there all, all day, no doubt that the pike had been smelling them, but as soon as I put this jointed lure on, I started cranking it and then putting a bit of action into it. It just triggered the switch to get into their predatory mode. And on the first cast, I landed a pike. Unhooked it, put it back, second cast, not much, nothing happened. Third cast, caught another pike. So we were there with dead baits all day long, and this caught two pike inside about three minutes, and the, the other pike were there, the other dead baits were there for hours. So sometimes you can um, trigger them to get onto the feed, which is hopefully what we try to do every time, but with the water being cold, it's it's been go slow going today, so the deads have been more effective than the lures, but me being a lure angler, I always got to bring a box of lures. Plus, the session isn't over yet. You That's never true. know. That's true. That is very true. We've got another uh, bit of time left. So, Thanks very much, Mike. No worries. Well, I think we're in the closing few minutes of this piking adventure. Just time for a quick brew and a Christmas slice because it is December. And this is what pike fishing is all about, really. The, uh, the cold weather, the bare branches on the trees, the pale light from the sky, the freezing, lack of pike action. the freezing temperatures, the lack of pike action, and the faintest seasoning of chimney smoke in the winter air. <laughs> <laughs> Scraping the bottom. <laughs> People oh. that are more comfortable than us at the minute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it has been great. It's been wonderful to be out on the boat and you've got, you know, fantastic yeah. uh, sunsets and you've got, you know, swans flying about and things like that. It's been absolutely great fun today. 
And of course, we got that double hookup as yeah, well. Fantastic stuff. Really great. At the same time. Yeah, hopefully, we've taught you a little bit about boat fishing as well. We don't do a lot of boat fishing, and I know a lot of people that watch this channel are probably more experienced than us and actually better bike anglers. Definitely. But <laughs> there will be people that are younger than us and not as experienced, and I hope you get something from this because we do try to impart knowledge freely, and uh, it, it, it might make you a better angler, it might make you a safer angler, it might save a fish, or it might save you it's all worthwhile so it might save you <laughs> <laughs> yeah it might save you if you fall in and you've got a life jacket because sam and kirky told you to wear a life jacket yeah. you know we'll be happy and your mum will be happy <laughs> right we'll give it another couple of minutes we'll have a brew and a christmas slice and then we'll take the boat in and we'll do a little bit of a sign off uh, thanks for sticking with us thanks for watching guys <laughs>